And I hope you're okay. I hope you can hear me fine. And uh, let me just get my settings in order. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah. Nice to see all of you again. Today we will change the subject. We did so many end games. By the way, we didn't uh, uh, talk about this yet. In the game, uh, Max Odlu played Rook G7. And what was it that we said about this position? Let me just quiz you very quickly to have an idea about this interesting end game. Uh, I'll just quiz you for a few moves here. Let's see. We can do it like that. All right. Just the last. Goodbye to the end games for now. How could perhaps Gukes have continued this game? That's right, John Sam, legendary goat, Wyatt. Maybe smart goldfish, uh, maybe. But I don't think it's the right angle, smart and uh, whoever said that. Aha, that's right, uh, Alg and Happy Pawn and Ryan. You can play like that also. Personally, I like better the other angle for the rook, but. Uh, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, let's check with John Sam. John Sam was the fastest student here. Please go ahead, John. What was your idea here? Not so much to do, right? We are going to lose this pawn on g6 and we will lose the pawn on h5 also. So what we do first, we target the pawn on g3 so that when they take with the rook, they got the pawn, but now we have managed to tie down the rook to the defense of that pawn. So white can take a second pawn here, but Maybe, just maybe, they don't have a very clear threat. Aha, that's right. We can perhaps just wait. It's also possible to put the rook on this angle. I think we talked about this briefly last time. But for some reason, I like the other angle better. But I think this is also perfectly fine. Yeah. So rook, a3, or, or whatever. And it was difficult for white to progress. So right, uh, John Sam, black uh, does not face a concrete threat here. We said that we could just uh, wait. Yeah, hi, everyone. Nice, nice to see you. Aha, uh -huh. exactly. We just wait and they can't really progress here. It's a funny position because they can do this and that, but after that, it's difficult for them to, to progress, it seems. One thing that they can, of course, always do, they can always try to go for this uh, endgame with Rook and uh, F-Pawn, right? You, I could play something like, let's say, if I played something like uh, G4, for instance, uh, would I play that here? I would probably play something like this. Please continue, John Sam, just to get done with this endgame, all right? Just to get done. Aha, the king should stay there like a goalkeeper, uh, protecting the pawn, making sure white's king won't move away. So if I go g4, well, in that case, we will get this endgame, the, the famous endgame with f and h, which is very often drawn, as long as you don't get cut off with the king. I think that's the best rule to remember here, but you can put your rook somewhere, I think something like this. But what you should make sure is that the moment when they are about to, to kick away your, your uh, king, that's when you have to give a check in the back so that later on, if they give check, you can go up with the king. And then very often you can go for the side attack later on. So anyway, I think we should uh, yeah, close this topic for now. We will come back to end games in the future. And uh, now I would like to turn our attention to, uh, to some um, uh, attacking uh, topics. Yeah, next topic is attacking games. So basically what we're talking about here is uh games where we are going for when we are going for an early attack at the castled king because there is another topic which we looked at with you which is uh, uh it's never too early to castle i think we said right it's never too no it's never too late to castle what did you say it's never too late to castle i think we said and we also had castled into it but we were talking about attacking the uncastled king the king in the middle so to speak but here I would like to look a little at the other side of the coin. When the king has already castled and one side is successful in launching an attack against the castled king already. Like, uh, yeah, you will see what I mean. It's a fun, a fun topic, by the way. It's an entertaining topic and I have many, many examples. So I think we can do at least three sessions of this. So I wanted to start with this game, Barton with white and Tari with the black pieces. It was played in the Polish uh, team championship. It was uh, Nils Grandelius, Swedish Grandmaster, who uh, hinted me about this game. He said it was very entertaining. And I checked the game and I really thought it was entertaining as well. So let's check this game. Played just a few months ago, I think. White facing the, uh, yeah, the E45. And they go for the Italian. Black played in this game, Knight F6. As you can see, there is some move order issues here. 
you can of course play bishop c5 first, but then there are some lines that you can avoid if you start with knight f6. Um, so knight f6 and after d3, only there they play bishop c5. All right. Um, yeah, my next question would be, if you don't play c3 and you don't castle, you don't play bishop g5. Could anyone tell me another move for white, apart from those three moves? Knight c3, exactly, heuristic mind. And Alg, you're on the right track. Just one thing here, Alg, Alg was mentioning the move bishop e3. I think that if you play this without knight c3 on the board, it's possible that I can take and play d5 here, perhaps, and I can try to fight for the center. I'm not sure, but maybe this is something that black could consider, right? I'm definitely no expert on e4, e5 openings, but I think it's very interesting, and it's, it's difficult sometimes to understand all the subtleties of the Italian. That's at least my, my impression. But in this game, they played knight c3. Looks like some kind of beginner's opening. Why would you play like that? However, there is a concrete point. So I will ask you first, if black plays d6, Anyone, what do you think is White's idea here? What do people play here? You get only five seconds, all right? Just to make it fun. Hmm. Yeah, nobody played the move that I was thinking of, but never mind. Yeah, you could probably play bishop d5 also, like you're saying. I don't know what will happen here. Bishop d5, h6. Uh, I, I know there is some system like this, and you play knight d5 and you play c3. If that was your idea, I'm completely with you. That's also interesting. Maybe you can expand later on with before. Yeah, I gave you very little time. I'm aware of that. Um, let me ask you something else, though. Let me ask you something else to get you into the right mood here. Some people were saying, by the way, Bishop e3. Oh, you got the right. Oh, I'm sorry, Torriches. I see, I see. Uh, Bishop e3 is also possible, of course. Uh, there is another opening I wanted to mention very briefly. Maybe you have seen this opening, which they call uh, Glex opening, right? Or, or I don't know how you, which name you use for it, but I know it as the Glex system like this. So uh, I, I just wanted to ask, ask you one thing here. If you have this position, if black castles here, anyone, what would you think uh, white played here? What would white play here? Anyone? Anyone who plays this with white? Or nobody plays this with white? No, nobody plays this with white. Okay. So uh, yeah, M very often in practice, black plays this move instead. Why is that? Why don't they just castle straight away? Aha, Tori Chess knows this exactly, Tori, you're right. White would play knight a4. So this is good to know. White can probably claim a slight advantage after taking the bishop in one way or another, right? If bishop b4, we will definitely go after the bishop. So for that reason, when white, uh, when black faces this kind of opening, very often they include a6 so that you can hide the bishop, right? Prevent knight a4. Exactly. You can't really prevent it, but you can take prophylactic measures against it. So. I'm trying to understand this opening. I must say it's not so easy for me, but I think that's the reason why it became popular. You play knight c3 because if d6, please go ahead, uh, Torriches, tell us what was the idea here for white. Now we play knight a4 and we get rid of this bishop, the, the Italian bishop, or call it what you like. Yeah, black can play in many ways, of course, something like that, and we can quickly eliminate this bishop. And you can play here in different ways, uh, Tori. I'm not an expert on this, but I can see some games they played c3 and later on they tried to play d4. Maybe there is a slight advantage here for white. Personally, I, I, think, I think it's pleasant that the bishop is gone. Um, so maybe for that reason, maybe just for that reason, in the game after knight c3, uh, Tari played a6 instead. So now he's like vaccinated against this plan. Now there is no knight a4 anymore. Uh, by the way, another opening where you can come across this kind of situation is in the English, right? In the English, you have these lines. If I, I hope you're on the right, we're on the same page here. In the English, you have lines like this where you put the bishop on c5. And then very often you go for this same uh, system and you always try to, like, if they play e3, you go d6, and if knight a2, you go a6. I have played this quite a lot myself. And you save the bishop on a7. It's like the same thing that some of you do in the London, right? When you play the London, you put the bishop on a4 and then suddenly you play h3. Basically the same idea. All right, let's come back. What if black goes knight a5, says Al. All right, let's check that, Al. So, straight opening. Uh, what if black goes knight a5? If black goes knight a5? Wow, interesting. Um, I guess you take the bishop, yeah. I, I don't know what happens from, from this. Is that how you play, or, or would you check? Yeah, I don't know. That's a very strange uh, idea. But I can probably just take, right? Or 
or is this too? It's a funny symmetrical position, but since I have queen takes, I guess it should be better for white, or no? Or we're losing ourselves in tactics now. Knight takes and yeah, big confusion. Yeah, I, I don't know. Looks like white is better here. I would be surprised if white were not better after knight takes and I don't know what you want to play. I take the pawn. I should be better, than right? Uh, knight xp7, very interesting. Can you play that? I don't think I can play knight xp2. No, no, but that's very silly now because I can just take and I take that. That's that's not a good idea. Yeah, so I think maybe this is the reason. Now we will take and so on. Knight xp7, bad. Yeah, I agree, Mexico. Uh huh. So I don't think they can repeat like that. No, I don't think so. M mostly, I think they will just play bishop b6. And we're happy to trade off the, the bishop. Anyway, yeah, no problem. Let's uh, continue. This game is in itself, it's very complex. It's a short but very complex game. So a6 was played, and now some of you can probably guess the move. If black plays a6, uh, this means that in some variations, the bishop cannot go back. So if you played, for instance, if you wanted to play after d6, some of you were saying bishop e3. Maybe I could play something like that, for instance, right? I could play bishop e6. But if a6 is included, now white's next move is very logical. Exactly, Brian, you're right. Heuristic mind, that's what happened. So that's how the Grandmaster perhaps thinks here. That, all right, since they played a6, we will make them pay for that move. Now, of course, they don't want to play bishop e6 anymore because they end up with a bad pawn structure. So they will have to do something else with this bishop. And yeah, they played, as you can expect, uh, you waste the move. Yeah, in some way you, you waste the move. You wasted the move because you were about to meet knight a4 with bishop a7 on every occasion, right? But then suddenly white changed plans and your move was not useful at all, you could say. So yeah, funny feeling, no? funny feeling. Uh, what to do with the bishop? Well, I think there is a claim for this move. I think there is a claim for this move. Bishop takes, pawn takes. I think this is interesting for, for black. I know that from the Greek system also, that there is this idea of letting white take. In the English, you also have it. In the English, in some lines in the English, you can come across the same idea, like, yeah, in these lines that we talked about. There is this idea in the English, when they play like that, and you play like this, and at some point, black plays like that. And I have seen this happen also. Black, I like to play a6 here, but I have seen people play castles, and then they just, yeah, they just let them take on c5. They play something else here, like a5, and you get this kind of thing. So I think this is nice for black, actually. That's one piece of advice I, I can give to you. If you are going to give away the bishop, the bishop on c5, maybe it's better to give it away on c5 than on b6. This, I think, is regarded as a little more passive, to play like this, a little more passive. But if you give away the bishop on c6, uh, sorry, on c5 instead, like playing a5 to prevent b4, I think this is nicer for black. I don't think black is worse in this position. Uh, so the English and Italian have similarities. Yeah, I, I would think, that, think so. Yeah, sure. At least for black's play, I think there are some similarities. All right, I'm maybe deviating too much from the topic. So bishop e3, and I think white was happy already. Like somebody said here, a6 was not exactly a useful move. And white has managed to clear the f file. Of course, this happens all the time in Italian, both from, on both sides, right? Sometimes it's black who is trading on, on, on e6 and so on. But in this game, yeah, you will soon see that things, uh, they move very fast in this game. You, if you give it away on b6, you open up the a file. Yeah, you're right, heuristic mind. But then sometimes they can play like a3. If, if you if we talk about this again, if you give up the bishop on b6, you open up the a file. But sometimes white can just play something like a4. And uh, yeah, they are like tying you down here also in the end game and so on. This can be good for white, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, anyway, maybe we should uh, continue. So they played here a6 and white hurried to play bishop e3. They took uh, on e3. Black played here d6. So I have a question here. Yeah, no problem, heuristic. I have a question here. Question. What would a beginner play? What would a beginner play with white here, anyone? Mm -hmm. I think so. All of us have been beginners, right? When we were beginners, one of the first things they told us about was to attack the pawn on f7. But can you really do that, play against super grandmaster like Tari? Well, it depends on the position, right? So he played knight 5 here. He played knight 5 this uh, idea, I mean, this very simple idea, I also remember it from the Sicilian. I don't know if some of you play this with white, perhaps, when you don't want to face the, the Svesnikov or Kalashnikov, you play something like this and then you play this. Maybe some of you have this on your, uh, on your repertoire with white pieces, perhaps. So, yeah, I'm sorry, Satak, I cannot make some kind of summary of what you have missed. Try to get here on time. 
Yeah, it's impossible to make summary for every student who gets your lens. So something like this, and if I'm not mistaken, in these lines, you can actually go for this plan also. You can play something like 95 and you quickly go for for f4. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is this has been played, and there is even some lines where you actually let them take and you have some attack and so on. So yeah, yeah, you didn't miss you didn't miss anything, says Holo Blade. Thanks, thanks for that comment. All right. So anyway, this is what I'm saying in the Sicilian line. You can see that there is also this idea of quick knight g5. I can think about many other openings also. If you think of, for instance, some lines in the Philidor, I don't know if, you, if we are on the same page here. If you play the Philidor like how does this line go in the Philidor? When you play like this, I think you all know about know about this line also. When you play uh, the old old style Philidor like this, here I think there is this idea, right? When you play, yeah, how does this go? I, not, I don't really remember this, but something like they play bishop e7 and you take, and then you play knight g5. Does this seem familiar? Something like that, right? Something like that. Bishop takes and. Queen h5 and you win the bishop battle. I can't really remember if it was like this or it was something similar, but yeah, that's another case of an early early knight g5. Yeah, you can probably come up with, with other examples yourself, but that's what I remember right now. So that's what he did in the game. Yeah, let's go come back to the game. Quickly knight g5. And I don't think this was preparation or, or anything, but okay, you never know these days. Uh, castles and why it's simply castles as well. So you can see by playing knight g5 early, I guess he stopped also h6. Maybe if he starts with castles, black would consider to play h6. Maybe that's, uh, uh, yeah, like a small difference now in that, in that case. So, all right, let's, uh, let's continue. So, uh, he played in the game knight g5, and after castles, castles, this had been played before. There was a game, uh, Demchenko Kravtsev, where Dem Demchenko faced the move h6. Sorry, he faced the move queen e7. So at this point, White played a very interesting move. Uh, they played the move Queen E1. Anyone? Why do you think they played Queen E1? Aha! You would of course say, of course, we want to bring the Queen to H4, like in the Sicilian Grand Prix and so on, or play Queen G3. Aha! Uh -huh. But there was actually a hidden point to this move also, because after H6, we had we have no time for this. We have to come back with the Knight now. However, you can see that the White Bishop is is powerful. But if black now plays knight a5, you can see that suddenly this queen strikes in the other direction also. Aha, now you can play knight e5. I thought that was kind of funny. All of us thought that the queen was going this way. But actually in this position, black has a problem with the knight. It's now hanging. So uh, they lose time here. And I think in this game, they actually gave up a pawn like that. C c6 and white took them. c takes d5 and white was what was up a pawn. And they were a little better in this game. Demchenko with white. So interesting, no? Interesting how he put the queen on e1, like multi, multi-function move, queen e1. But what you saw here, it's very, very different from the game. This was an easy ride for black, even if, yeah, white was a little better. Now we are uh, back in our main game. So we, are ha we have actually come to half of the game. We are already at, at uh, half of this game. And I will invite you because I'm, I think I'm talking too much. And it's uh, your turn here to find the next three moves of this very entertaining game. All right. Good luck, everyone. Don't send the moves too fast. Don't send them too fast. Think for at least 30, mi uh, 30 minutes, I think. 30 seconds. All right. Think for half a minute before you send in any moves, because the move order is really important here. We need the flexibility. OK, we need flexibility. This is move nine. We are at the half of the game already. The game will stop at move 18. So by the way, today's topic, attacking games, it's time to attack now, said the Polish Grandmaster, and guess what he did here. Interesting move, uh, Smart Goldfish. I, I like your idea. Maybe I can go like Knight A5. Okay, we have two winners here, Connor and Gordon. Congratulations. Uh, Santos and Southtack, you're on the right. Wow, we have many moves here. Interesting. Yeah, we will try to figure out this together, all right? Uh, we have three winners, Connor, Gordon, and Al Morris. Uh, and then we have a lot of people who want to play in a different way. You will have to rem remind me on this one, all right? You'll have to remind me because you're giving me a million different uh, ideas here and I won't be able to remember everything. So, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, what's wrong with Queen H5? Yeah, we will come to that, all right? Patience, patience, please. Let's look at what Connor has to say. All right, Connor, it's your move. How do you continue here? 
Exactly. We play like in beginner style, but it's just that it's a strong grandmaster playing with the white pieces here. So black took back. There is nothing else to do, really. We need to take quickly, else I guess they will have some counter ideas like d5. If you play something like queen h5, I think that's a bad blunder. I haven't looked at this. Oh, no, you cannot do that here, right? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, brain, brain damage. Yeah, if you played something else here like knight e5, I guess it's not the same thing. I don't know if I can play maybe something like bishop e6. Those of you who said knight e5, you should check what to do against knight e6. Doesn't look uh, convincing. Yeah, very bad blunder, exactly. So, yeah, we really have to take such as uh, rook takes f6, somebody was saying also. Yeah, very brilliant and so on, but probably not very strong. Uh, I also get my own counterplay here, so I, I don't believe in this really. So let's continue with um, Connor. Please go ahead, uh, Connor. 95 then 96. What's wrong with that? At what move, uh, le legendary? I don't understand. Uh, you'll have to tell me at, at which move number, no? Because move two. Knight. So, sorry, Connor. Sorry, but we have this still like a, like a conversation here. I don't understand what you want to play here. If you take, I take back, and I claim that I have won a piece. Did I blunder something this time also, or did I actually win a piece? Queen g4, yeah, that's too much uh, talent, no? You're too talented. Uh, bishop takes, and I'm a piece up, right? This cannot be correct. And if I want to be really tricky, I can play something like that also. But I don't want to be that tricky, of course. <laughs> I'm just saying that crazy things like that can also happen. So uh, I don't believe in your attack, honestly. Uh, yeah, hollow. That's a nice uh, tactical vision, but you can maybe use that move later. All right, Connor, let's continue. Go for it, please. And now we had a choice. This is where many of you wanted to play in a different way. So I will try to explain this the best I can from what I understand. If we look at these two pieces, we talk now about attacking logics, right? Attacking logic. Uh, which are the possible destinies for these pieces? Well, if you ask the knight, I think there is only one destiny, right? But if you ask the queen, there can actually be at least two or even three, right? We can maybe go to h5, but we could also perhaps go to f3. Who knows if the bishop is not around, maybe we go to g4. But as for the knight, there is only one uh, possible destiny, I would say. It's, it, it would be way too slow to think of something like that. We, we wouldn't do that if we have sacked the piece, right? So from flexibility, uh, from a flexibility perspective, play the knight move first, because we know that the knight should go to d5 anyway. I hope we're on the same page here. Like in some positions where, where there is an open e-file, we say, play rook e1 first, and then we'll see what we will do, like in IQP positions. It's never wrong to have rook e1 in, right, in the IQP. Why is that? Well, in the IQP positions, uh, I hope you see what I mean. If you don't see what I mean, I'll show you in a millisecond here, so that I'm not talking about something that nobody uh, understands. That would be a pity, right? So if we take some mainstream IQP position, let's say black just takes on d4. They don't uh, go for any subtleties and we end up in a position like that. Let's say something like this. So, white will play rook e1. This can never be a bad move, right? It can never be bad. It's always good to have the rook on e1. One of the reasons for that is that the rook, well, unless you play queen e2 and, and rook d1. But else, this is basically the only good square for, for the rook, right, in this structure. Well, on the other hand, you have many other ideas, but the bishop, it might go there, or it might go here. The knight, we don't know yet, no? That would be about flexibility. All right, I hope you understood my point. Now we can continue with the game. So we were listening to Connor, who said that we should take on f7. We should take again on f7 and play knight e5. We keep this move in the pocket. Now, if you said queen h5, I will, of course, play king g8. So those of you, it was a big group. All of those who said this, I would like to know what's the next uh, move that you wanted to play. Qu queen g6. And I can see the cheap tactic here. I can see a cheap tactic, which I think is very neat. Black cannot play. Queen is e8, right? That would be a bad mistake. This time, 10 seconds will be enough, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a nice way to see how many uh, people are around here today. Aha, everybody got this right. Correct. Great word. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Quoki. You can show us what did White play here, Quoki, in this uh, variation. Aha, very simple. I call this the lifeline when you exploit the fact that your opponent has an undefended piece. You offer a trade. Well, in a way, we didn't do that, but something like that. So, I won't play queen e8, of course. I would just smoke out your queen in a different way. Aha, that's right. We can just play knight e7. I think, no, I haven't looked at this, but uh, I, we're looking at it right now. So, those of you who said this, how would you like to continue now? 
As far as I can see, you have only one move, and it's not the kind of move that you wanted to play. So if you go queen g3 here, well, I can play many things, right? But maybe I can put my king down, for instance. And I'll just try to develop properly. So I don't believe in this. Yeah, rook takes f6, I will take like that, and I have this move coming up. Aha, prophylactic thinking. Now, sometimes when you put a knight next to, it, to the king, it can help for prophylactic uh, yeah, situations like this. Maybe I can play this move, and if you come here, I will try to trade it off and so on. You should compare this with uh, you should compare this with what happened in the game. So we're back to Connor. Connor said that we should play knight e5 instead, and that's what happened in the game. So it's black's move here. It's difficult to play black in the game. Tari played the move king g6. You can imagine his uh, feelings when he arrived at this position. I mean, in the other games, perhaps they were still in, in the opening field, they were still in the opening and so on. And here he's already getting destroyed. So not easy at all to uh, defend this kind of position, psychologically speaking. Uh, he didn't expect this to happen, right? So I have a question for you. They played King G G6 in the game. Why then didn't they play King G8? That's our next quiz. Let's see who can figure this out. Uh, I don't think it's very difficult, so you get only one minute. Aha, HDI chess and 206, congratulations. You found this in only like 10 seconds, great. Oh, you suck like that, interesting. Yeah, maybe you can play that also, uh-huh. All right, we will talk about that. A lot of people got this right. Adi Chess, Santos, Chess Vedan, John Sam, Heuristic, Kind King, Aug, uh, yeah, and some more students. Uh, great work. So if you play in the other way, you don't, Keep the knight anymore for attacking purposes. I see. So if you take, I take back. You play queen h5. I go king g7. Yeah, you have a good, you have a choice there, right? Who should stay? Who should go? We already sacked a piece, right? We have already sacked a piece. No, we haven't sacked a piece. We have given up two pieces for, uh, for a rook, right? So we are so so in material. Material is okay. Uh, rook takes it. It's so obvious. All right, the hollow blade. It's so obvious, so you can show us then. What should white play here, Hollow? Who should stay? Who should go? Would you like to keep the knight or would you like to keep the rook? Aha, we want to keep the knight. So this is like Mikhail Tal logic. We keep the most dangerous piece. This is a deadly threat more than taking the pawn. If I now simply play king g7. Yeah, most queen g4 is not, uh, not the right moment. Aha. And the good old rule, bring all the friends to the party. We bring the last piece to the action. Black is a piece up, but yeah, you must have seen this in Mikhail Tal's games and so on. But there is no no way ever they will survive this because we can take on f6, probably with the rooks that we can take on h6 next turn. So tragedy of time, you could say. Tragedy of time. Let me play some move here just for fun, uh, Hollow. You can take it from here. All right, Hollow? I think so too. I think black does not stand a chance here. I, I'm getting mated if I play like that. And if I take like this, I think it's just too many pawns already, right? Is this game classical? I mean, the game was played uh, one month ago or something. So I don't know if it's classical yet, but it, it might become perhaps. So this must be winning for white. Uh, material is already perhaps slightly favor favoring them. And also we can see that uh, they are much better coordinated. So they should win here with the, with the pawns, right? I guess in some way. Yeah, I don't know. We will have to be careful still, right? But white should be close to winning. Something like that. I don't know if you want to give me this move for free. You could also maybe start with queen g5 so that you have more flexibility next turn, right? I don't know. If, is there, could you maybe start with a move like that? I would imagine that, right? And then you're ready to run with the pawns. In any case, difficult for uh, for, Bla for Black to, to defend this. I don't know if there is something better. Maybe you can find something better. Maybe you can take with a knight also. I don't know. Or is there something even smarter? Like, could you play rook f3? Exactly. That's, that's also on the menu, right? So I don't know. Many things going on here, but it looks very, very scary for Black. Maybe this is the best, best choice. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, time control is classical. Yeah, I think so. This is a Polish uh, team championship. I think all those team championships, they are usually played with a classical time control. So yeah, I think so. Uh, or maybe not. Yeah, actually, I don't know. I can, uh, can I, can I look this up? No, I, th I think it's, it's a classical game. Anyone, if anyone is interested, I can tell you the name of the event. The name of the event, it's called uh, Team Championship of Poland. Let's see if I can write this here. If anyone wants to do research on this, I don't know how interesting it is, but just in case the event 
is called like this. No team championship of Poland, extra liga. I think it was wrongly written, but on, on my part, I mean, it's probably something like this, like the extra league or something like that. Anyway, we should continue, right? We should continue. So if King G8, definitely white is going to take like this because the knight is very powerful. And also because we make space for the other rook, right? Time is money in this way. We make space for the rook. Not quite so if we take in the other way. If we take in the other way, maybe it's also interesting. But then we need another move to free up the F1 square. All right, let's continue. They played in the game. King, uh, oh, 45 plus 10. Really? I don't know. I don't know. You're probably right then, yeah. But still, it's it's not like a blitz game. No, it's they have quite some time on the clock. So King G6 was played in the game. And I will bring up a new quiz here. Let's see if we have learned uh, from uh, what we have seen here. Let's see if I can get this right. Yeah, I think we can stop. I will stop here. All right, you get one minute for this. I don't think it's very difficult. Maybe it's the same move. Yeah, who knows? You have to strike fast, probably, right? Be before black gets a chance to bring out the pieces. Interesting move by Fianchetto. Aha. Uh, if you play like that, what would I play? Bishop e6, maybe. Okay, Alg and Adi, you're playing basically like in the other line. I will go king h7 there, Adi. Uh, happy pawn, the same goes for you. I will try king h7 and a uh, prayer that uh, my king will stay alive. Nobody played like the Grandmaster. Wow. Knight takes f6. Oh, so you really want to take like that? Okay. So far, nobody played like the Grandmaster, but Heuristic Mind was extremely close. So I think what you played, Heuristic, is also very interesting. Uh -huh. We have two winners here, Brian and Daniel Best. Congratulations, you have played just like the Polish Grandmaster. Yugoslav and Berserker, you're the third winner. You just made it with a few seconds left. And Legendary Goat with just one millisecond left. Congratulations. All right, uh, Brian, you were the fastest one. Please go ahead. What's wrong with queen g3? Probably nothing, Adi Chess. I can only give you one correct solution. Okay, please go for it. Aha, rook takes f6. Again, the same logic. Please notice if you wanted something. It's obvious here to say. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to say also, the relative value of the pieces uh, is, uh, is very important in attacking situations. No? In attacking situations. You have to get used to that, of course. We have to get used to noticing that a knight like this one is not just three points. It's probably a bit more, right? And this rook, this rook is very little right now. But if it can join the battle soon, it's increasing, of course. Yeah, anyway, I'm speaking very obvious things. So, pawn takes. Please go ahead, uh, Brian. We bring our pieces to the attack. Please notice what we talked about in the past. The queen could go to different squares. It was not clear from the very beginning what we will do with the queen. But it was clear that we would use the knight on d5. So queen f3 was played in the game and it still looks like if black should not be lost here, but if that's your opinion if, or if that's what you think, then tell me what to do against the rook f1 next move. I mean, it looks like some Mikhail Tal game. Uh, that's what he would do to his opponents also. Difficult, right? Difficult. So yeah, what happened in the game? I think he played bishop e6 in the game, very reasonable move, trying to trade off the knight on d5, defensive trades. But he's just one tempo too slow here. Unfortunately, one tempo slow. Now knight takes f6 is coming up next, which would mean that white has new attacking ideas coming up. Black took on d5. Aha. We keep all the checks in the pocket, of course, uh, Brian. We don't need to do anything like this or that or so on. Of course not. It's better to keep flexibility. Please notice flexibility, key idea, flexibility. A key idea in attacking situations. No, keep all, keep all the cards in the pocket or whatever you would say, right? Uh, nice. So pawn takes. Where should the knight go? Yeah, if you go on that side, yeah, yeah, you can see for yourself. If I go this way, for starters, I just lose the knight, right? If white doesn't want to think, you can just go and pick it up if you don't mate me. But I guess you can actually go for mate here also, right? Uh, what do you think? Uh, Brian, would you take the knight or would you go for more? Maybe you can go for more. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't calculated, but it looks, looks tempting, right? And we bring up the rook also. The knight is on vacation and so on. So this might also work. Yeah, bring up the rook and, and attack. But else, if you really don't want to risk too much, you could probably take it also. And you would be, let's see here, you want pawn up and you have an attacking position. Yeah, you must be completely winning. So uh, what to do with that knight? Going this way, it's also tragical for black. 
to move away the knight from the battle. In the game, they played knight e7. All right, please go ahead, uh, Brian. This was not difficult. Uh, so here, I think it was somebody who was saying, what's wrong with queen g3? And I don't know. I wouldn't play it because it looks more crushing, than convincing the other line. I think I would play king h7 and I would use this, what I call mobilization. I would mobilize the queen. I would bring the queen to the defense by playing here queen g8. I don't know if this is holding or not. Possibly it's not holding, but I would try this at least. So maybe not so clear. So why would you not go queen takes ex exactly? That's my way of thinking also. If this looks like an invitation to this move, right? Because we bring our bring in our pieces faster. So queen takes, black played in the game, king h7. And uh, please uh, don't tell us the last move here, Brian. I would like everybody to guess what the grandmaster played. Anyone? Should I quiz you? But maybe you get angry if, if you don't play like he played. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, you can of course check me and you can check me again. Aha, that's right. Al, GM, Mexico, Tori, Mr. Chiki. Everybody found this move very nice. As they say, the threat is stronger than its execution or something like that. Uh, but I think there are multiple winning moves, of course, in this position. But uh, the next move made Tari resign. So... That cannot be a bad move. Let's uh, ask uh, Daniel. Please go ahead, Daniel. What was uh, your move here? A silent attacking move, queen e6. You don't need to give check on every occasion, right? Of course, you can do this just to show who's the boss and you can come back. But uh, it's a very clean way of executing the attack. Queen e6, making room for the rook to f7. I think there is no way of saving black here. I mean, we can try, of course. Uh, yeah, how would I try to save black? I'll play something here just for fun, uh, uh, Daniel. You can continue. Yeah, so time to time for mate, right? Time for mate. If you can create a, a double mating threat, that's usually too much. If you have, that's another thing about attacks. If you can attack, if you can threaten mate in two different places, that's one too much. So yeah, white uh, white wins. And he actually resigned here after queen e6. So nice. That was a nice attacking game, right? We will take it from the very beginning. I won't quiz you on the first moves. This is what we saw already. Uh, this move I have to quiz you for very quickly just to see if we're on the same page. If you understood this, you get only five seconds. So you better think think fast. Yeah, exactly. A lot of winners here. Ryan, Ryan, uh, Fianchetto, Santos, and so on. Exactly. We start with bishop e3. We're making them pay a small price for having played a6. They cannot just play. Bishop e6. Okay, they took on e3, d6, knight e5, castle. So it's not about attacking the castle king, uh, ant castle king, it's about attacking the castle king. And here, of course, this would be your next quiz here. This is the one that we already had. We will do this very, very quickly. We will get only 20 seconds, 15 seconds for this mission, all right? Aha, uh -huh. we play like beginners here. We take on f7, we're not supposed to do that. But in this case, of course, with the open f file, it actually works. Uh -huh. The open f file makes the big difference now, makes the big difference. I think you all know when you were beginners and uh, yeah, you were taught about this uh, variation. They will tell you that in, in the Italian, if, if they play knight e5, don't worry, you can just castle and then you can play h6 and if they take, you just take back and black is much better, right? That's probably what you were taught also. Something like this, and black is probably better in this position. Now they have a nice nice game coming up here. But this is not the same thing, because here the f-file is closed. While well, in our game, the f-file is open, thanks to this very clever move, bishop e3, right? So here we go. Knight e5, and it's crazy, but it seems that black is already lost here. Uh, they played in the game king g6. I will quiz you again very quickly, just to make sure that we are on the same page here. But you don't get much time for this. Yeah, I hope you like this uh, repeating. Uh, else, I'm sorry. 10 seconds so that we don't lose too much time for this class. Aha! Gordon, Tori, Smart Goldfish, Yugoslavian and many other students got this right. Exactly. Exactly. We just bring in the pieces. Aha! The knight is more useful than the rook and also the rook is taking up the space from the other rook. So that's the reason why we should play like this. And, uh, Bring in the rook. Black was unfortunately not able to save this game. Tragedy of one tempo, you could say. If they had just like one extra tempo, they would be able to bring in the queen and, and the rook maybe or something like that. So yeah, that's what happened in this beautiful game. 
queen takes and queen e6 need finish 18 moves 18 moves that's not bad no not bad to beat such a strong player in just 18 moves all right we will continue we will look at something else let me see here um, what else did i have prepared yeah i wanted to show you something with the black pieces also right i thought maybe we could take a game which was played in uh, yeah where was this game played in uh, in spain earlier this year so these players are not grandmasters but still very strong players um i, I guess you're familiar with the players jacobson the younger uh, brother of the jacobson brothers from the us and Mysuradze, i think originally from georgia but now playing for france so uh, let's have a look at this game we will start with a trivia question here what's the name of this opening name kalashnikov that's right tori congratulations svesnikov almost uh, wyatt svesnikov is like the bigger brother of the kalashnikov the svesnikov is the one that appears if we play like like this right that would be the svesnikov when the knight is already committed to f6 what magnus carlson played against caruana in the world championship and so on anyway here they play e5 immediately there are some differences here one big difference is that after knight b5 d6 if white likes they can actually play c4 here which they cannot do in the svesnikov so this allows some kind of would you call this uh, maroxi bind I, I don't think so but something similar to that still black has many interesting ways to play here i saw some games where they use this plan of piancetto like this like a botvinic setup like this and 97 castles f5 and so on there is an interesting game uh giri pichot giri pichot giri if you're interested in this line you can check this no pichot giri giri won a very pretty game where he trapped pichot's queen i think in the middle he put the knight on f6 by the way in that game giri. anyway knight c3 was played in our game main move in this position knight 1c3 here it's of course if you want to play this opening or if you already play it you, you must make sure that you don't allow 95 while there is a knight on b5 so of course black played here a6 knight a3 i know that you can play this position in a bunch of different ways some people play bishop e7 some people play bishop e6 but here they played b5 right Torre chess it seems you know this opening very well knight e5 was played and here if you like you can play knight f6 transposing into the svesnikov but in our game my Suranza plays instead knight e7 which gives this like the typical um, Kalashnikov flavor to this game. So knight is, 97 was played and white can react in many different ways. Anyone just for fun? White's exactly 206, 206 knows this opening. C4, that's the most critical move for white, I think. The, the most promising move you're trying to fight against black's king side, queen side. One interesting thing about this opening is that you can do things like this. You can take and you can put the knight somewhere like here. And if they take, you can just play like that. Funny, funny opening. And if they take like this, it's supposed to be bad. You can play like this, queen checked, and you take on d5. And I think black is better here already in this position. Funny, no? You can pick up this pawn later, like some kind of Benko, Benko gambit. But okay, my my knowledge of this opening is not so limited. But looks a little like the Benko. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so white, if you play white, please don't play like this. Please don't take all the pawns and definitely don't give up that pawn. So white usually plays in other ways here. Uh, you, you develop the pieces or something like that. Uh, anyway. In this game, they played instead the move bishop d3, speaking of development. So black took on d5, and I would say this is already like a small victory for black. You could say small victory, small victory, uh, no outpost, outpost on d5 anymore for white, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, you have this also in other Sicilians, right? In the Nidorf and so on. Black is often happy to take on d5, especially... Yeah, if, if you can keep the, the light squared bishop, this bishop is going to be very important in this game. You can go with the knight to different places, but in this game they played knight e7. All right, let's continue. So far, no attack. Now we are still in the opening. White played c4, attacking black on the king side. So if you're a real Kalashnikov player, what should you do with this pawn? What do you think? Anyone? What to do? Exactly, heuristic and hollow. Sack it. Aha. Don't play b4. I mean, it's nice to sack it, but I think this makes life easier for white. No, it's not the right way of sacking it. A true Kalashnikov prayer just say, hey, you can have that pawn. I will go for my attack. So you're right, the Wyatt and hollow blade. That's exactly what my Suraja played. She played here the move. 
G6. Just getting ready to develop, and you can see some similarities also with King's Indian, I would say. Uh, they played in the game C takes, and as we were discussing, don't care about pawns in this opening, you just get going with attack. You write out 206, bishop g7. They castled here, and so did black castle. So, interesting position. You can see very double-edged. White is a pawn up, but uh, the pawn structure is not so good for white. Maybe black has this uh, mobile pawn majority that you come across in some openings, like the Sicilian Neidorf and uh, Sveshnikov and so on. Anyway, let's continue. White took the pawn in the game. Do you think we should take this pawn or should we do something else? Anyone? No. Aha, don't take. Santos, you're right. We can go for our attack. So she simply played f5 and now we're actually back on this topic of flexibility because as you can see, we have actually two ways of pushing our pawn majority. Of course, that will depend a little on what white does also. But it's interesting to notice that you can choose between the two rooms. By the way, the pawn, I think, should not be taken. If you do that, I think there are tactical problems. Uh, that's not on the menu right now to give away something like that. We are playing for an attack. These pawns will have to wait for a little later. All right. White played in the game, queen e2. And here I will quiz you for black's next uh, two moves. All right. Let's see uh, how you would like to develop this attack. You get uh, yeah, 45 seconds for this. So. Try to find the best way to continue here, make a choice, try to look at different factors in this position. Uh, interesting choice by HDI and Yugoslavian. I'll, most people want to play like that, I see. A heuristic mind on Sam. Everybody wants to play like that. It looks very natural, but she didn't play like that. And yeah, we have two winners here. Sarthak came late today, but uh, found the right move here. Aha, Connor, awesome Owen, you're on the right track. I would play f4 as white, probably. Interesting, yeah, some kind of King's Indian logic. No, sometimes we play f4 with white so as to frustrate the black attack. Smart goldfish, you got it also, congratulations. Aha. Uh -huh. Then we had many other moves. Oh, some of you want to play g5, interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, bishop f5, also very interesting move by Wyatt, Tori, Fianchetto, and so on. We had a whole bunch of moves here. Queen b6, we talked about flexibility. Don't use up that move, please. So, anyway, let's try to talk about all this in some way. We will start with uh, Sarthak. Please go ahead, Sarthak, tell us how should black continue here. So we push that pawn, which at first sight is like horse TI. Why would you play like that? Think of some King's Indian. You would always play E4, right? Opening up the game for the bishop and so on. But white has, uh, black has understood that in this case, yeah, I'll put my bishop somewhere. I don't know, bishop B5 or bishop C4. Maybe I'll put it on B5 so I can go here with the knight. It's not so easy for black to continue this, this attack. F4 is just blundering the power on E4, right? And yeah, what else could I do? Maybe white is about to play F4 also. They can try to block us there and put the bishop on E3, something like that. Not so easy for black to progress in this line. And always knight takes there are problems with, I don't know, bishop C4 or bishop C6. I don't know which one would be best. Maybe bishop C6, possibly, or, or maybe not. A lot of tactics in this opening, but it seems to me that, yeah, black should be... Uh, in trouble here in this, in this game. So, yeah, uh, f4 was played in the game, and you can see f3 is now on the menu. And I think here white made a mistake. Here comes the big mistake in this game because white played the move f3. Logical, you could say, to stop f3, but what does uh, black play now, Sarsak? What was your idea? Exactly, knight f5. That's a very, very important move because we had multiple choices here. Some of you wanted to play queen b6. But this will ruin the attack that black is going to have later because the queen is actually heading for a completely different place here. Guess where the queen is heading in this game? What do you think? Think of the other game that we just looked at. <laughs> Try to remember where the queen went in that game and you can relate it to, to this game. Aha, it's going to that side. It's going to this side instead. Interesting, no? You can also see why it has like a lack of defenders. Now, these pieces are on holiday or they are still not engaged in the in the defense. So knight f5 is very clever. We can keep this move in the pocket on some occasion maybe, but uh, as for now, we're more interested in sending the queen that way. And then some of you wanted to play g5, but I think that's more for the king's Indian, right? You can do that in the king's Indian. I understand you want to play h5 and g4, things like that, but this, this is not exactly a king's Indian. Uh, it's more open, right? So maybe I can bring in my pieces. I don't know. How would I... How would I develop here with white? Uh, good question, actually. Yeah, what would I play here? Knight, 
knight c4, knight b5. I need to get my pieces into the game, or maybe just like bishop d2 and uh, knight here, maybe. And I don't know. If you if you continue like that, maybe maybe I can put my knight here. If you play g4, can I maybe put my bishop over there? I don't know. I'm just guessing that your attack is not uh, automatic here, right? It's not automatic. The queen cannot come here. Why not king f7 to rook h8? The center is not stable. That's a very good comment by Happy Pawn. It's not the same thing as in the King's Indian, where it's more close to center. No, but here white has plenty of, of attacking ideas. I mean, I could also maybe put my bishop on, on this square, now that you don't have queen b6 anymore. So, yeah, I also feel it's kind of iffy, <laughs> the attack, with Tori Chess uh, words. So, king f7, rook king, yeah, I think that's, you, that's like living in a dream world, that you will think that will work. For instance, I will not take on g4. I will not open up the h file. So you can attack in two ways, right? If we talk about attacking play, two ways, two ways of attacking. Okay, one with the pieces and two, let's see, one with the pieces and two with the pawns. As simple as that. So when do you attack with the pawns? We're usually in opposite castle positions, right? In some, I don't know, uh, English attack in the Sicilian or something. When do you attack with the pieces? Well, very often when you have the kings on the same uh, flank, right? When you have the kings on the same flank. If we went back, if we went back to the previous game, can I do that here? Let me see if I can bring up the previous game. Just for fun, just for fun. If we play through this game, count the number of pawn moves. Count the number of pawn moves by white. We have one, two, right? So far we have two moves. Then we have three, but this is almost like it doesn't count because we had to take the pawn. But how many pawns did white move in this game? Well, certainly not many. I think they didn't move any more pawns in this game. Did, did I get that right? No more pawn moves, right? They had an easy day at the office, these five pawns. And the others didn't move too much either, right? You see what I mean? Kings on the same side, we use the pieces quite a lot, not so much the pawns. Nobody told me that we should play, nobody said play h4 and g4 and things like that here. Well, somebody said h4. Actually, I don't remember who said this, but this is also an interesting move. Just that what you played in the game was much stronger. Aha, captures don't count. Yeah, so the pawns, they didn't uh, have a big, you could say, um, they didn't have a big role in this attack. And here we have something similar. If we now go back to our uh, game that we are looking at right now, which was played earlier this year in, in Spain, uh, let's see it from Black's perspective to enjoy it a little more. Uh, you can see that, yeah, Black is making some pawn moves, but basically to develop the pieces and so on. We have some kind of pawn storm coming up, but once we manage to provoke f3, now Sartak quickly played knight f5, and everybody can see what's going on here. Well, if you can't, the queen is a big boy. Yeah, the, the pieces are big boys. Yeah, we used the big boys here, you could say. Knight c2 was played in the game, and it's quiz time. So I'll quiz you for the next, let's see here, how many moves should I quiz you for here? Yeah, I think only three moves. Yeah, one minute should be more than enough for you. I should give you only 30 seconds. Uh, if you play like that, uh, Alg and Connor, Sartak, interesting. We will have to discuss this. Yeah, maybe I can decline the sacrifice, right? I can decline it if you play the queen first. If you move the queen first, I will consider queen f2. If you go knight g3, I will kindly decline your sacrifice. I'll try to do something else. Can I do that? Well, we'll see. Congratulations to Brian, 206, Smart Goldfish, Khan King Sam, and Quoki and Happy Pawn. You all got it right. That's exactly what happened in this game. Aha, it looks like white is getting mated now. But they're not yet mated. Yeah, don't worry. There is still some moves left in this game. Aha. Uh -huh. So a lot of winners here. Um, Tori Chess, legendary. You also got it. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, awesome Owen. Great work. Maybe you should look out. Look into the Sicilian Kalashnikov, could be an interesting opening. So please go ahead, uh, Happy Pawn, you can tell us how should Black continue at this point, how to make this attack work. So if you're going to sack the knight, you better do it here, because if white declines the sacrifice, if I play something like queen, queen f2, I suppose, I'm not an expert on this, but I suppose that you can just cash in here, right? You could probably just cash in and you get like some kind of winning. Uh, endgame here, you can maybe, now I would use, use up the move queen b6 and I would take this pawn. Or if you want to be more flashy, of course, you could start like, like that and then you pick up the pawn. Then I think we're, we're heading towards a good panorama here with white, with black, right? I think we don't trade the queens. We keep the queens on and we bring in the rook and 
and so on. You can also say it's funny, no? We gave up the square on E4, but look who has to travel quite a lot to get there. The knight is far away from, the, from E4. I call this the magic distance. I think this is another thing that hurts right here. They can't easily bring a knight to, uh, to E4, right? It's the, this knight, to bring it to E4, it would have to travel like this, but that takes a lot of time. So, yeah, knight g3. We are back uh, to happy pawn. Knight uh, g3. So, please go ahead, uh, happy pawn. Here we can definitely talk about the happy pawn. This pawn is happier than ever. And suddenly, white is lacking a good reply against the move queen h4. So, if you said the other way around, if you start with queen h4, my point is that I could perhaps play something like this. And when you play knight g3, I will decline the sacrifice. But I, I haven't looked at this. I don't know what would happen here. If somebody can find some very clever idea. I know that if you had a rook like that, you could then take and, and make me like, like this, right? But that's not going to happen because I have my, my bishop there. Knight f5, you go back with the knight. No, I think that's not what you mean, right? Bishop f5 says hollow. Yeah, maybe you could play like that. I guess that's the idea, right? Now you're getting closer to playing rook. Uh, you're going to make me now. But uh, yeah, maybe I can save my skin here in some way. I don't know. One thing to look at here, if I, if I take, I don't know if this works. If I send my queen over here, for instance, you're not mating me yet, are you? Or you are maybe. Oh, you are. I'm actually, we're into the game now. We're into the game. Yeah, I can't play like this, right? I can't play like this. Aha, you have rook takes f3. Exactly. Now we're actually talking about something which will happen later in the game. And g2. You're right. So I should stay a little closer, right? I should stay a little closer. Something like queen e3 instead. So that I protect this pawn. But you're still mating me, right? You're still mating me with queen h check and... Yeah, I think uh, you're right, uh, Holo. Yeah, we will come to that. I just wanted to straighten out that maybe this is also possible for, for black or maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I think black is doing very well here. Maybe, wow, rook f... That's not a good idea, right? Queen takes. I think I lost my head in all the tactics here. <laughs> Anyone who understands this? Yeah, I think this was not, not correct by me. But I get, the, I get the point. Black is attacking and white should play h3. That's what uh, Hollow Blade is saying. Aha. h3 is much better. Yeah, much simpler, by the way. They can forget about their mate. So, happy pawn is right. Oh, sorry. We should definitely... Yeah, now we get an extra look at the opening. We should definitely start with knight c3 because if they accept the sacrifice, well, then... If they don't accept it, we take the exchange. So, if they take it, yeah, that's the game, right? So, queen h4. All right. Let's continue. Black is now about to mate white, so white played rook fe1. Um, I have a question then for all of you. Uh, Black's, bl Black's best move, uh, which is not queen h2 check. So we will make a quiz here. You will find Black's best move, but you must not play queen h2. Two, all right, can we agree on that? If you now send me the move queen h2, yeah, then it's uh, not my fault. Uh, <laughs> all right, so try to find a way to continue with black, but I don't want to see queen h2, okay? Oh, you can play like that, interesting. Maybe. Uh, if you play like that, I guess I go king f1, yeah? Maybe. Bishop g4, wow, that's a brilliancy. What if I go bishop e4? I try to protect that pawn. Are you still mating me? Interesting. Yeah, maybe there are multiple ways of, of winning here. Nobody played like she played in the game. Interesting. Uh-huh. Lot of attacking possibilities, no? Yeah, nobody wanted to play like, like she played. But yeah, no hard feelings, no hard feelings. It was very effective in the game, let me tell you. But uh, if you want to play in a different way, no problem. As long as you keep your attack going. Connor, you're definitely closest. So we can check with Connor if nobody finds the... The solution we will check with Connor. All right, Connor, you can, uh, or Hollow Blade also. Yeah, Hollow, you can tell us what should we play here with Black then. Aha, so that's the key move here. When we're attacking, we need to bring in more pieces. In this way, we either clear the F file or we weaken White's control of the F1 A6 diagonal, right? I can certainly not play this, I get mated. And if I take like that, what was your idea here? Exactly. Now I think everybody understands the check is coming, but with mate. So uh, white cannot move the queen. They have to go back with the bishop. And then I think you wanted to play. We will look at bishop g4, Tori. We will look at that. No problem. Please go ahead, uh, uh, Hollow. You can play your line. No problem. No hard feelings. Yeah, she didn't play that, but that's perfectly possible also. 
Uh huh. I think I know why she didn't play like this. But we can we can talk talk about that if you like. Uh, how will you continue now? Rook takes a free. So you're right, says Vedant. That's like the story here. Uh, if I take like that, you can take. Yeah, we can look at that very qu quickly, right? You can take and you can come with the rook this way. Uh, yeah, please notice that I'm always relying on this defense. So if I take with the pawn, says Vedant, what was your idea then? Aha, now we're transposing into the game. Queen takes. So that's basically what happened in the game. That's right, very nice. We haven't yet finished, but we will come to that. So in the game, she actually kept the queen in the pocket the whole time, which I thought was nice also, speaking about flexibility. She took first. Yeah, you could also play like that, I guess. It should also be the same thing, right? Or no, I can take like, like this maybe now. This is not so clean, maybe, uh, hollow. This is not so clean. So I think it's better to play uh, the other way, yeah. So she, she took first. And now she went, I thought that was brilliant, yeah, but it's technically there is no big difference. But I thought it was very aesthetic to play like that. So, threat of mating one, white has to take, and yeah, you can continue uh, hollow. Yeah, we, we talked about this already. So the queen and the pawn, that's all we need for this attack to work. That's how the game went, king e2. And they reached this very interesting position. Yeah, don't, the queen and knight, please. Aha, that's right. That's how the game went. And I think you can guess the next move here. Uh, hollow. It's not so difficult. There is no mate, by the way. No mate. It's just clearly better for black. Exactly. So usually when you have two queens in the attack, it makes sense to double them, though. I'm, I'm joking because you almost never have this <laughs> in your games. But if you had it, you should just do this. Uh, like if they were rooks, right? So, yeah. I don't have uh, the rest of the moves here, but white uh, lost uh, soon here. No? Very difficult to... Yeah, queen and knight would be a sad promotion. But this is very happy for black. No way white will save their king. Black is ahead in material, and you can see that even, I mean, I have things like this or that, and I can even think about something like that. If my two queens would not uh, mate white, I can also consider to run with the eighth pawn. So, yeah, royals on the seventh rank, says Southpack. So that's what happened in the game. Black went on to win. Now I wanted to touch briefly about the other moves that you were saying. Some people are saying bishop g4. Yeah, very interesting. My answer must be bishop e4. So. If this was your choice, you'll have to prove now why why is this a good for for black? Because I, I can't see it honestly. Uh, rook f4, yeah, at least it's in the right spirit. No, I understand your point, Tori. I cannot take because I get mated and you want to take here, right? So yeah, what would I what would I do here? If I move the queen, I can move the queen maybe, right? Or or is that that forbidden? Can I put my queen somewhere? Like queen? I don't even know where to put the queen. Queen queen c4 maybe? Is that possible or too much? going on here yeah i don't know maybe it doesn't work queen h2 okay tori is mating me here or what bishop takes f3 wow I, I think you're right i think i put my queen on a very unfortunate place right it was probably not the best square for for the queen yeah okay i i apologize and i will play queen queen b5 instead okay is that possible or do i get mated i feel like i'm getting mated you take and you yeah i, I think i don't have a good answer here yeah, queen d3. It was like that, right? Interesting. Rook f4. Wow. Uh, amazing that that can work. Yeah, it's, it shows the power of this pawn, right? This pawn is really, really uh, menacing. Um, yeah, beats me. I can't see how white uh, survives here. So, okay, bishop e6 says chess better. That's probably a good try. Uh -huh. But I guess Tori chess. Yeah, what happens here? Take. No, I don't know. I don't know. Also, I have this, uh, speaking about powerful pawns, I have this as a distraction, right? So maybe, maybe bishop e6. Yeah, brilliant defense by Chess Vedant. I agree, 100%. Bravo. Uh, double and sack on f3. Double and sack on f3. Yeah, I, this pawn must have some importance here, right? I'll try to run with this pawn. Uh, but I'm not sure I have control of this anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Rook takes e4, says Santos. I have no idea what's going on here. I would like to just take back and hope that you're not killing me. But maybe you are, right? I don't know. Rook takes a three. But you're running out of fuel now, right? You're running out of fuel. If you take... Oh, with the bishop you take. Yeah, but I can take back, right? I can take back. And I have my... How is this compared to the game? Oh, maybe it's very powerful. I don't know. Anyone who understands this? What's, what's going on here? You're queen and I go back with the king. I'm about to have a queen also. So this is... Maybe it's not so good as the other one, right? If I can get a new queen here. Uh, yeah, crazy variation. Yeah, I don't know. Queen G, G2, all right, but I will 
go for my attack. And uh, yeah, I, want, I guess you want to play Bishop F8. I think I can just protect this knight, right? And you're not. Oh, you're mating me here. Oh, we talked about this, right? When you have two mating threats, that can be one too much. Interesting. Who said this? Uh, yeah, somebody said this. Congratulations. It seems that you're winning here, unless somebody can show me the, the opposite. Yeah, that's a nice variation. Aha, uh -huh. but very hard to calculate. If this is true, it's definitely not so easy to calculate at the board. But yeah, very inventive, very inventive. I think we get an idea about how to play this position, but I must say that, that what she played was way easier, no? way easier, e4, much easier to calculate. You only need to see like five moves here, and you can quickly see the, the connection here, right? That something's wrong for white, they cannot keep everything closed in this position. So, But bishop e4, yeah, very good choice also. Congratulations if you saw that. This is how the game went, and as we were discussing, in the end, there is some kind of tactical intermezzo that wins the game for black. Um, so basically, yeah, we won't repeat this because we're a little low on time. I just wanted to show you one last thing in this game that a few days later, uh, she was playing this opening again, but this time she was facing a uh, grandmaster from India, uh, Prana. So what Prana did, which was very interesting, uh, he must have noticed that when he checked his game, he must have noticed if we, if we check the game again, uh, he must have noticed that this was very bad for, for white. And he concluded that it's actually better to allow F3. It's better to allow it. So even here at this point, white should probably allow it. Play something like knight c2. Let them play F3. We can take and we can still try to save this game, like maybe bring the king here. This is better, lesser evil than the other one. Black has attacking chances here, bring the knight and so on, but white is defending much better than in the game. Maybe we can put the bishop on e4 at some point. Aha. So what the Indian grandmaster did when he had this position on, on the board against the same opponent uh, a few days later, he actually played like this. He took, and you can see how preparation goes. He played, uh, let's see if I can find this right. He took, no, he played rook e1, he played this move first. And <laughs> she started with h6. I guess the point was to maybe prevent bishop g5. He took, put the knight here, and here he did something very clever. I wanted to show you something about defensive thinking also. He played a4. Anyone, can you tell me why did white play a4? What's the point? Strengthen the knight? Aha! But there is something else also. There is another idea. To clog the diagonal. Yeah, sure. But there is another idea also. Yeah, chess Vedant and Sartak, you got it. That's what happened in the game. Then he played rook a3. And suddenly it was not so easy for black to attack. Uh, f f3, we can always meet it with g3. Nobody's mating us here, right? We can always bring home the bishop. So that was a very nice concept. She tried in the game knight f5 and he just played bishop d2 and he started an attack on the queen side. I thought this was very clever, his way of playing, keeping the rook defended. So that's like the other side of the coin. It was not like an automatic attack from the very beginning. But the way the game went, as we saw here, the game, the way the game went, it was very powerful. If you want to take like one lesson from this game, is that if you're white, very careful with such moves. You can maybe prevent one threat, but then you run into something else. And if you're playing with the black pieces, please forget about pawn storms like that. In this game, please use your pieces, attack with the pieces, right? So just like a final re reminder here, final reminder about this game, I'll just quiz you very quickly to make sure that we're on the same page here. So this is the last thing uh, we will do today. Here we go. You get 30 seconds. How did Black develop their attack here? We're just repeating. Aha, that's right. John Sam. Uh, Gordon, Santos, Sarthak, Alg, and uh, many other students, Daniel, Holoblade, uh, Tori, uh, yeah, Mr. Chicky Dude, that's completely right. Fianchetto, you got it. No Fianchetto in this game. Well, for black, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. The, it was not very important to Fianchetto, so to speak. So Yeah, Bishop G4 is also fine. Tori, chess, if you play that. Uh, we can have a fianchetto, you can uh, carry out uh, the move. So, okay, last look at this very nice attack from black. F3 was played, weak in the G3 square. White quickly brought in the knight so as to prevent knight E4. But now black attacked in a different way. Knight E3, better played now while it's threatening something. And this is the kind of attack that white couldn't really resist in this game. They played bishop E3, I think, or rookie one, and we continue 
with the attack. Yeah, yeah, we're we're done now. We're done. We're done. Yeah, we're done now. Rookie one. I just wanted to see the last move here. Aha, uh -huh. opening all the doors to the attack. Even the bishop, but it, it was never used, right? Or maybe it was used later, but yeah, you get the point. So we create some new possibilities for our pieces. All right, guys, thanks a lot. See you next week then. We will continue with more attacking games. Thanks to Chess Dojo, to Chessable, to USCS, Greg Shahadi. Thanks to all of you who assisted today. Thanks and bye-bye. Uh,